Dad Party. We are here tonight from the rooftop of the CCO office in Pittsburgh, and we are so excited to celebrate the class of 2021. Yep. God is doing good work through each of you, and we are just thankful for the opportunity to honor that tonight and celebrate you. And we want to know where you're tuning in from. So drop us a message in the chat. Where are you tuning in from? If you're a senior, tell us where you're graduating from. If you're here to support a senior that you know and love, drop their name in the chat too and show them a little love. We're really excited to see how wide this reaches. I'm Jamie Dawn. I help lead the CCO Alumni Network and I graduated from Kent State University. My name is Carrie Real. I work on the events team and the Jubilee team. You might recognize my name from a couple of emails. And I graduated from Point Park University here in Pittsburgh. Tonight we have a few staff joining us to share words of wisdom and encouragement with you. We have a musical performance from CCO student group RIPE. And we have a really special surprise for you towards the end of the program, so be sure to stay tuned in and we're really excited to show you what it is. Now here from our very wise staff, we have Gerard coming from the Fresno area and Heather and Ivan from the Memphis area. Hey, congratulations. You have graduated. Oh, there's more. You have graduated and I'm so proud and excited for you. Um, and I'm so excited to think about what is this next season and this next season of life will mean for you. Um, as I was thinking about what, to what we're gonna share to, to you, one of the things that came to my mind was the road to Emmaus, right? If you don't know the story to road to Emmaus, let me give you a brief setup here. Um, so this is, happens right after um, Jesus has, it's the third day after Jesus rose from the grave, right? Um, and people are, are trying to now figure out what the heck is going on. So there's this big meeting that was going down, and the women came to come tell the disciples, like, hey, y'all, friends, um, Jesus ain't there no more. He told us he's out doing things, and they didn't believe him, so they run to the tomb. And then these two men are walking in the field, walking down the street or to a village, and I don't really know because I wasn't there. Uh, but they're walking somewhere, um, and they have this uh, conversation, and Jesus walks up to them, but they have no idea who Jesus is. So Jesus is like, hey, what you talking about? <laughs> and these two men are like, bruh, are you the only person who's been visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened over these last few days? And so Jesus is like, no, what are you talking about? And so they then began to share the story of like, hey, the Messiah, we thought the Messiah had come. He lived his life. Things are great. The people then took, a, took control of him. They killed him. Then he was dead. We thought he was in the tomb. He's not in the tomb. And Jesus is like, let me tell you something. They then go on this walk um, to their village. And at one point, they look at Jesus and say, hey, bro, you want to come over for dinner? And Jesus is like, I got nothing else to do. Let me come on over for dinner. And at dinner, Jesus then breaks the bread. And it was in that moment where these two men were now like, oh, crap. This is Jesus who's in front of us. And he's just like, hey, you're welcome. And he leaves, right? Which is really cool. And what it makes me, when I read this, I, I think a lot about where college graduates are right now in these three things. I think about your position. I think about the power that you have. And I think about the purpose you're about to live into. I think about your position. You have just come out of a year of years, actually, of hard work giving your best, giving some of you giving your best, because we have to be honest, there are days we don't give our all, right? But then you come out of this season of giving as much as you can, and now you are a graduate. Congratulations. But in this moment, you're like, what the heck just happened to me? Especially coming out of a pandemic, right? You're just like, not only did I give my best for two years, then the last year and a half has just been crazy, right? And now you're looking at like, Lord, where am I? It feels confusing. I thought I knew what was going to go on. I thought I knew the next, the next answer. But know this, that the spot that you're in right now is such a sweet, sacred, holy spot. And friends, I'm so excited for you to be here. Because this is the moment where you're asking really good questions about what do I do next and why? Where do I go from here? And who do I bring with me? This is such a sweet moment. So I want you to ask yourself, where am I? Who's around me? Where are we going? What position am I in? 
And then it was in the sharing, right? It was in the going through life with Jesus, knowing that Jesus is there with you all along. These folks took a walk, a seven-mile walk with Jesus, and did not recognize him. So it's okay. It's okay if you are walking with Jesus right now and you don't even see that he's there. But here's where the power comes. The power comes in actually the, commun- the communing with Jesus. The power comes when you're sitting there, he breaks the bread with you. So asking about your own power, friends, are you breaking bread with Jesus? Are you aware of how Jesus wants to be in relationship with you? So here's the thing. No matter what your position is, it really matters where your power comes from. Okay, so if your power is not coming from the source of the power, who is Jesus, my, my challenge and my question for you, friends, is how are you going to find that power in Christ, right? How are you going to make time to commune with God? And so first, where are you? Who are you bringing with you? Where is your power coming from? And it was the purpose came once the bread was broken And they had this fire in their belly. The scripture says their hearts were on fire, right? So once they were with the Lord, they began to have passions and ideas about crazy things. And if you have been in the CCO for any amount of time, you know that we believe that God has called you to do crazy, beautiful, wonderful things, no matter what field of study or space you're coming from, right? So I want you to begin to think about what is this purpose? What is this fire in my belly? What is this, what is my heart on fire for? And what am I going to do with it? So college graduates, congratulations. We are proud of you. I'm excited to celebrate with you. But I want you to begin to ask yourself those three questions. Where am I, my position? Where does, where is my source of power? And where am I going to, what is, what is in my heart? Where's my heart on fire? Where, where's that fire in my belly? And begin asking that question. That might be at home. That might be abroad. It might be in Fresno. It might be anywhere. But I'm hoping that you're asking yourself the questions about your position, your power, and your purpose. Congratulations. Thanks, Gerard, for that encouragement to follow our purpose, to follow the passion and the fire that God has placed inside our hearts. And you may be wondering, how do I do that? What does that look like? Where do I start? I think when we finish college, it's fairly easy to be optimistic, to feel like we can take on the world, and that's really good. But I will warn you, that may not last. Sometimes life comes at you hard, and you may get into the workforce or be struggling to get into the workforce and realize You don't quite have the position and the authority that you wanted. People may not give you the power that you're hoping for. The change you're fighting for may not happen as quickly as you want, and that can be discouraging. I know when I finished college, I went through a few years of chaos and turmoil, questioning, who am I? Am I doing this right? Feeling like I was figuring it out as I went along, but that's okay. We want to let you know, you don't have to have it all figured out right now. You don't have to have every step mapped out. You just need to take the first step of faith that God is calling you to. So we decided to take a step to get on the road today. We took a road trip from Memphis to Nashville. We are actually recording at Fisk University, which is a historically black university, one of many hubs of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. And at the time, a local pastor, Reverend James Lawson, reached out to this campus because he believed that he could equip and empower students to be activists for change. And as a result of his outreach, a couple of students that you may have heard of, Diane Nash and John Lewis, got involved in the Nashville Student Movement and that formed into the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. That's right, so Diane Nash and John Lewis, a lot of their early work happened when they were in their 20s. So when Diane was 21 and John was 20, they actually walked down the road here to downtown Nashville and started doing nonviolent protests and sit-ins um, against segregation in their city. And then just about a year later, uh, when she was 22 and John was 21, uh, they hopped on, on the road on a bus to launch the Freedom Rides to continue that fight on a larger scale. 
And then just a couple of years later, when Dr. King was marching down the roads of Washington, D.C. and giving his I Have a Dream speech, a 23-year-old John Lewis hit that same podium and was able to urge the people there to continue the fight towards equality with a sense of urgency. And then when she was 27 and he was 25, they marched 50 miles down the road from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, to ensure that every American had the right to vote. You see, Diane Nash and John Lewis spent their 20s on the road, and they didn't have any higher position than you do. They didn't have any more power than you do. It's actually the lack of those things that pushed them to rely on the Lord and to rely on each other in a new way. You see, they knew what we know, that we don't have to worry about our position because there's a God that loves us, that holds us in the highest order above the angels and above all of the rest of creation. And we don't have to worry about our power because we have a spirit inside us that raised Jesus from the dead. We don't have to worry about those things. And in fact, Jesus isn't asking us to, and he's not asking us to be at the end of the road. He's asking us to get on the road and he'll meet us there. Hey, Congratulations again. We're so proud of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. It's all of my life I've seen the light of the day pass away with the pain. I might have let slip away It's all of my life I've seen the light That finds a way to move The darkness aside God. 
Wow, thank you so much, Right Music, for that beautiful song. Uh, we're so grateful to have you back with us. They also joined us at the Jubilee After Party, Every Praise, and we loved your performance there and we loved it again. So thank you. And special shout out to Rashid, who is a graduating senior. Woohoo! Um, so now it's time to announce the special surprise I mentioned earlier. And that surprise is we are giving away free copies of this book. Serious dreams, bold ideas for the rest of your life. It is packed with knowledge and wisdom, and we're really excited to kind of share the special connection we have with this book. One of the authors of this book is Byron Borger, our friend from Hearts and Minds Bookstore, and we know that you love seeing his face at Jubilee, and we wanted to make sure that he was a part of tonight. Byron has so much wisdom to share, and if there's one thing we know about Byron, he loves, loves college students, and he is so excited to celebrate you and the rest of the seniors tonight. So we're putting a link in the chat, and if you are a senior, make sure that you sign up so that you can receive your free copy of this book. Byron, take it away. Well, hello, this is Byron Borger coming to you from uh, the Hearts and Minds Bookstore. My wife Beth and I own Hearts and Minds in South Central Pennsylvania, and it's a thrill to be here with you. Uh, you know, you've heard uh, Gerard out at uh, California, and Heather and Ivan down in Memphis, and now you're hearing from me in South Central Pennsylvania. There's folks back at the CCO uh, headquarters in Pittsburgh, and I, I think we just want to say that God loves college students wherever they are. And now today, we want to say God loves you. God loves college graduates wherever you are. You know, that's one of the slogans CCO uses that God wants to see college students transformed by the gospel, transformed so they can transform the world. And that's one of the reasons we celebrate God's uh, work with college students, particularly college graduates. We're here to celebrate you today because of the things God has done as you've learned things, new ideas and skills and practices and attitudes and visions and competencies over your last years, hanging around with CCO people and in your college career. So God's going to use you, and that's part of his story. We believe that's what the Bible teaches, that you get to participate in the redemption of God's work in the world, his redemptive plan in the world. So we're here to celebrate that and to honor you today. It's just wonderful. I know some of your CCO campus leaders, and they love to have a good time. They'll have a party for anything, and this is a party for you. And so we're just really delighted to be here. You know, I'm I'm particularly glad to be with you. I um. I didn't walk in my own college uh, graduation. It's a, an odd and unpleasant story you don't need to hear. But, you know, I have great solidarity with those of you who have had a rather unusual college ceremonies here this year. I'm glad you're online together. But it's been a hard year. I know it's been kind of a crummy year to be a senior. There's been so much hardship and COVID and everything and the racial injustices, just a lot going down that has made it hard to be a senior. 
and now a hard kind of awkward time to graduate. So we want to have a party for you, and we're here just honored to help share in that and talk about God's promises that you can lean into in the coming years to see where God is going to be leading you as as you begin to transform his world. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, edited, a, uh, edited a book about being a college senior. It's a collection of graduation speeches from a variety of speakers, many who had been to our Jubilee conference, called Serious Dreams. And I'm a bookseller, so I have to tell you about it. It's what I do. But it's called Serious Dreams. Don't you love that line? Bold ideas for the rest of your life. We got a number of these speakers and put some discussion questions in together, and you can get one free. If you sign up, CCO is offering this to you to help sort of remind you of the dreams and visions and hopes you've garnered over the last years hanging out with CCO and being a part of their movement. Uh, you know, I wish, uh, in a certain sense, this was a Zoom meeting so I could see some of your faces. I know some of you from Beach Project or selling books at Jubilee and meeting there at the conference or, or when I visited some of your campuses. So it's just really special to offer this book to you uh, to think through and to imagine how God is going to continue to give you dreams and visions as young people moving into his world. They asked me just to take a moment and read a little excerpt of this from my particular speech. Uh, my speech in here was given originally out of Geneva College in western Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, it was about the sons and daughters of Ishakar. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible, this obscure verse from 1 Chronicles 12, 32 that mentions the sons of Ishakar. And sons and daughters of Ishakar are those who understand the times, the Bible says, and knows what God's people should do. And I would pray, my uh, prayer for you would be that you would come out of your college years here now as, as a son and daughter of Ishakar, who understands the world and your place in it and God's story and his redemption and what we need as a Christian response to his world. Um, you know, in this speech, we talked a little bit about lament, uh, Martin Luther King's favorite song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. The great Mahalia Jackson sang it at his funeral. And we were talking about hardship and whether we can really give three cheers for Ishakar, which was the name of the chapter. And I said, even in these hard times, yes, indeed, we can still find joy. And in this party for you today, they asked me just to read this little part. I'm, I'm here to say that we college graduate Ishikarians love the world, no matter how messed up it is. We've been studying, after all, the creation itself, and we've seen the very fingerprints of God under the microscopes and in our residence halls, on our sports teams and in the literature we've studied, in our equations and calculations. This is God's world. We know the Savior and Redeemer of the world. We know the Christ who upholds it all. We serve the King of the whole world who rules it with mercy. Now, we dare, dare not be glib about this, but we even know the Bible says that to suffer for his righteousness, to be bound faithful at our own small tasks, no matter how seemingly insignificant, regardless of the consequences, is in fact our greatest joy, to be prepared to suffer. We give ourselves today to advancing God's reputation in his world. We commit ourselves to use our newly acquired wisdom and skill sets and degrees to advance his kingdom by serving the world. And that too is the joy of the Lord. I say congratulations to you on this joyful day, this day set aside to honor you. Praise God for your work for what you've learned, for the support from your friends and family, and all you've done these last years. But be prepared, brothers and sisters. We need to be ready. We need to deepen our discipleship. We need to go further up and farther in, as C.S. Lewis put it in the last battle. We need to trust God more completely, being eager to learn even more about his kingdom as we go along. We must redouble our resolve to be joyful to be winsome, to be emotionally healthy and whole, to be spiritually alive. We need to work hard at having friendships and maintaining community. Some of you are going to have to even stay in touch online and across the miles if need be. So we can become really whole people that offer the world real wisdom, even to the hurting world, showing authentic insight to a confused culture. Our kingdom ideas and Christian principles must be embodied in tangible ways in specific contexts wherever you find yourself, like true sons and daughters of Ishakar. 
we must, like that famously joyous runner in that old movie called Chariots of Fire, feel God's pleasure as we work and as we play. So I want to say, friends, today, even though I know it may be hard, let's just throw back our heads in holy, fearless laughter. In great joy, go forth. Go forth trusting God's promises. Go forth with kingdom resolve to be God's ambassadors, Christ's agents of reconciliation, his people of shalom. Go forth in singing. Go forth in prayer. Go forth in love, in service, in laughter, sometimes in silence, maybe in an uncertainty, maybe even in tears. But be prepared to rejoice even through those tears. In all of our work, in each and every square inch of creation, in every zone of life, let's not just offer three cheers, but three hallelujahs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We gather here today to honor you, to celebrate you, and to give the glory to God. So whether this season is one of confusion and questions, or you are just so excited and filled with the anticipation of what's next, we know that this is a holy space and that God is meeting you and he will meet you. And we can't wait to see the kind of serious dreams that you come up with. Psalm 126 says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. We know that the Lord has done great things as you've experienced him in your college years and that he will continue to do great things. And we are glad as we celebrate that with you. Let's pray. God, thank you for the ways that you have met each senior throughout their college experience for the way that they know you better because of the way that you met them. And we ask that you would continue to do that, that you would make us each like those who dream and that you would bring your restoration into the life of every graduating senior. We pray for moments of celebration, that you would make us attentive to every great thing that you're doing and that you would pour out your oil of gladness over each college senior. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Jamie, get back over here. And while she's coming back, I just want to again say a special thank you to Byron, to Ripe Music, to Gerard and Heather and Ivan. And thank you, Jamie, for that wonderful message. So tell us in the chat what you learned from these speakers and what you plan to take with you tonight. Many of you have shared your names with us and so we are excited to read them aloud now. We know that God knows you by name and so we um, are just excited to celebrate you in that way tonight. Absolutely. So congratulations to Wara, Shelby, Rena, Margot, Tori, Rachel, Huge congrats to Joshua, Kristen, Blair, Clay Adam, Joanna, Jacob, Emily, Caroline, and Kendra. Big congratulations to Carly, Wayne, Elizabeth, Jaina, Breland, Lauren, Donovan, Taylor, James, Celeste. Huge congrats to Sydney and Julie, Isabel, Zach, and Levi. Congratulations, Evan, Cameron, Carmen, Morgan, Callie, Willard, Christina, Brendan. We are so proud of you. Claire, Natalie, Morgan, Landon, Stephen, Emma, and Evangeline. Congrats to Maddie, to Marshall, Caitlin and Allison, Jackie, Anna, Danielle, Elise. Congrats to Madeline, Mariana, Katrina, Kayla, Joshua, Sarah, and Ian. Congratulations, Nasia, Shay, Sydney, Cecilia, Marlin, Amanda, Anna, Benjamin, Rachel, Connor, huge congrats to Aaron, Allison, Sydney, 
Megan, and Lena. Congrats to Savannah, Austin, Eve, Andre, Trey, Caleb, Sarah, Alyssa, Rachel. Huge congrats to Quinlan, Meredith, James, Savannah, Grace, and Shelby. Congratulations, Skylar, Anna, Jefferson, Caitlin, Elise, Becca, Mark, Emily. Huge congrats to Deshaun, Caitlin, Brianna, Sam, Aaron, Christopher, and Michaela. Huge congratulations to Faith, Jared, Michael, Abby, Kylie, CJ, Daniel, Jaunty, Diana, Crystal, Fallon, Taylor, Alexandra, and congrats to Zach and Anya. Congratulations, Anna, Jane, Kate, Megan, Margaret, Evan, Jehaziel, Meredith. Huge congrats to Aaron, Sarah, Cynthia, Kimberlyn, Maria, Rashid, and Angela. Big congratulations to Cameron, Ryan, Sabrina, Kelsey, Emily, Sam, Brooke, Liz, Hannah. We're so proud of you, Sarah, Mav, Spencer, John, Carrie, and Yen. Congratulations, Houston, Dave, Morgan, Sarah, Caitlin, Elizabeth, Alexis, Victoria, Tiffany, Adrian, Nolan. We are so proud of you, Taylor, Hannah, Sydney, and Lee. And we're going to finish it up with a big congratulations to Emily, Hannah, Julia, Lily, and Lane. Woohoo! Congratulations! Yay. So remember to sign up with the link in the chat for your copy of Serious Dreams. We are so excited to get this book into your hands, so be sure to head over to the chat for that link. Congratulations to all of you. We are so proud of all the hard work that you've put in. We're proud of the way that you are following Jesus, the way that you have in the past season, and the way that you're following him into this next season. We love you. We wish we could be with you to celebrate in person. And one last big thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the graduating seniors who spent your evening with us and celebrated with us. A huge thank you to campus staff, CCO staff and beyond who have poured into these students for their college years. And thank you for, to the families and friends, church members of the graduating seniors for tuning in. We're so grateful you joined us as well. Um, and also a big last thank you to the CCO Alumni Network. Thank you, Jamie, for all of your work. Um, if you're a graduating senior and you're not yet connected with us, please click the link. We'll put some in the chat for you to stay connected with us. And if you've already graduated college, maybe you're a few years out, maybe a few more, this alumni network is for you too. We've got some great things planned and we would love for you to join us. So be sure to head to the chat for those links and one last big thank you. Have a great night.